October the 3rd, 2016, and we will be discussing from John Maxwell's book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth, today, and we'll be sharing the chapter on the law of the rubber band and the law of trade-offs, and we'll get started with the law of rubber band. I'm not going to go through all of the slides about me and who I am today, but if I can get Dale, if you'll click through those real quickly, we'll you can read those at a later date. You can go back and listen to uh, previous recordings and hear more about me. It's not about me today, and it is never about me. It's always about you. But I will share that we're talking about uh, information that is covered in John Maxwell's 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. And I hope you're using the Jumpstart Your Growth companion journal that goes with the book as it will um, help you as you journey through your life. There's nothing more valuable than keeping a journal so that you can use it to reflect on what you're learning and the experiences you're having as you're growing in your business and as you're growing in your personal life. Uh, the goals, I will go over the goals because I think that's important. And the first goal that I have there is that I want you to realize your potential because this whole book is about our potential and helping us grow in our potential. I want you to believe in yourself. One of the biggest failures people experience is believing in themselves. Because if we don't believe in ourselves, how can we move forward and develop and become what we are designed to be. We want to increase our level of success, and I think that's something we all can agree on, that we're here to raise the level of our Shackley business and to raise the level of our personal lives and our personal journeys so that we can be the best at what we do. And one of the things that I teach and preach all the time is that we have to be intentional in our lives and in our businesses. Intentionality is the key to all of our success. So the law of the rubber band says this. Growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you could be. To me, that is the statement of all statements. Tension. It's not like tension from a headache or from stress, but it is. If I'm teaching this class live, one of the things that I do is I give everybody a rubber band. And I ask them to put it on their wrist so that they can be reminded about a rubber band because a rubber band is one of those things that is very stretchable. And if you have that rubber band on your wrist, it can be used as a little reminder that I'll talk about in a minute. But think about all the things you can do with a rubber band. You can use it to hold papers together. You can hold it, use it to put a hair up in a bun. You can use it to do many, many, many things. So as you think about that rubber band stretching, think about it as your life and how you can stretch your life to do many different things. It's that tension between where you are today and where you dream and want to be in the future. Now, in John's book, he talks about several things as it relates to stretching and growing. And that's the key to what we all need to do is to stretch ourselves to go from our comfort zone to the abundant zone. So where are you and where could you be? You know, there's the, the, the statement that mediocrity is not a worthy goal. And I truly, truly believe that. Why would you settle for mediocrity when success is an option? So, you know, in John's book, he talks about 
You know, what is a worthy goal? And we'll talk more about that. And he talks about the average person, and I'll share the story on that as well. So what are some series of stretches that we need to take? Let's think a minute. Now, you know, Dale and I have a strong faith, and we believe that God has gifted each of us with tremendous gifts that we use to help us grow to our potential. Our gift back is to develop those gifts so that we can better serve, that we can better develop our gifts to help us reach our potential. And in the book, John discusses a series of stretches that we can do in our life. And these stretches help us grow from where we are today to where we dream about being in the future. So we're going to share some of the benefits of stretching today. So that we don't have to stay in the same place. Because if we're in the same place very long, then we know it's time for us to stretch. You know, it's like waking up in the morning after a long night's sleep. What's the first thing you have to do? I know for me, I raise my arms and I stretch. And then I get my legs stretched out and I finally I roll out of the bed. Because if I stay there all day, nothing is going to happen. So I have to stretch and get out of that place. So where do you need to stretch right now? What areas of your life do you need to move from where you are to where you know you should be to help you stretch just a little bit? That's a lot of areas in my life that I need to stretch. And I try to work on them every day, but I get distracted. I'm sure you do too. Let me tell you about a story of stretching for me. I had an opportunity in 1998 to take a new job in a new area of my life that was going to be uncomfortable. It meant giving up a lot of things here in South Carolina and moving my wife and me to Washington, D.C. We had lived in Columbia all our lives, but I knew that if I was going to stretch, if I was going to go to the next level in my military career, that my stretch would mean that I would have to go somewhere else to get that stretch to happen. And in this picture right here, I'm presenting to a group of people in Syracuse, New York. After I had stretched and grown and moved to DC and became the chief of recruiting operations for not just the South Carolina Air National Guard, but for the entire Air National Guard. I had to stretch myself to get there. I had to do a lot of things differently in my life to get there. And it was hard. It was even hard when we were putting that application in the mailbox to go there. But we managed to let the envelope go into the postal box. And a few weeks later, we got a call that said that I had been selected and chosen to take this role and the stretch began from that day going forward to be the next level in my career. Stretching is what got me there. It took me to a new level of income. It took me a new level of responsibility. I now had to be not responsible for the four people that were in the recruiting and retention office in South Carolina, but now I had 504 people that I was responsible for. 
a little budget of $3,500 to $5,000 for advertising and about $10,000 for operations went from there to millions of dollars that I was responsible for. I had to stretch myself in a lot of ways. So what areas do you need to stretch yourself today? There are benefits of stretching, and I'm going to share a few of those with you. You know, few people are willing to stretch, but when we do, when we do stretch, the rewards are exponential. We don't want to settle for average because average is really not good enough. What does average mean to you? Few people want to stretch. Why is that? I don't get it. But that's the case. Abraham Maslow says, if you plan on being anything less than you are capable of being, you'll probably be unhappy the rest of your life. You have to stretch. You have to reach out. Or you could be like the guy who says, I'm average. And I'll just share a poem with you real quickly. Average is what the failures claim to be when their family and friends ask them why they are not more successful. Average is the top of the bottom, the best of the worst, the bottom of the top, the worst of the best. Which of these are you? Average means being the run of the mill, mediocre, insignificant, and also ran a non-entity. Being average is a lazy person's cop-out. It's lacking the guts to take a stand in life. It's living by default. Being average is to take up space for no purpose, to take the trip through life, but never to pay the fare, to return no interest for God's investment in you. Being average is to pass one's life away with time rather than to pass one's time away with life. It's to kill time rather than to work it to death. To be average is to be forgotten once you pass from this life. The successful are remembered their contributions, their failures are remembered because they tried, but the average, the silent majority, is just forgotten. To be average is to commit the greatest crime one can against oneself. Humanity and one's God. The saddest epitaph is this. Here lies Mr. and Mrs. Average. Here lies the remains of what might have been, except for their belief that they were only average. We don't have to settle. We can stretch ourselves beyond average, and we can be successful. That status quo ultimately leads us to destruction. Stretching always starts from the inside out. And you've heard me say this a hundred times if you've been on these calls, that it always starts on the inside. That it's what's in us that is displayed on our outside. It's what shows outward from us. If we're stretching, people will recognize that. And if we're just sitting back, watching things happen and wondering what happened, people recognize that too. Stretching always requires change. It's never too late to beat what you might have been. I love, love I, I, this great quote that 
you've all heard before. And this is if you want something different in life, you have to do something different to get it. If you want be better tomorrow than today, then why the heck do we need tomorrow? Choose to make your future self thank you for the things you do today. Stretch and grow. Stretching sets us apart. Good enough is the motto of the defeated. Well, that was good enough. But really, was it good enough? Stretching can become a lifestyle. It's what we do for a living. The successful make it part of their daily journey. It's a lifelong pursuit. It's like lifelong learning. Our lives must be in consistent, excuse me, in constant pursuit of growing, learning, improving, and giving more. As I said, if you want be better tomorrow than if you want to be better tomorrow than today. And then what do you need to do for today? What do you need today for? The benefits of stretching. It gives you a shot at significance. And significance is the goal for all of us. Stretching must be intentional. And it must be done until the end. Make your greatest fear to achieve mediocrity. And there are ways that we can overcome and develop our growth. And we can start by asking ourselves some questions. In what areas of your life have you lost your stretch and settled for and settled into? Can you define your own potential? If not, you might want to find someone to help you, a coach, a mentor, your upline. You know, we all have blind spots. We all miss things about ourselves that we need someone to help us see better. Don't be afraid to ask for help if you want to grow and stretch yourself. What habits have you developed that hindered your progress towards your potential? Y'all know one I shared a lot. It's that famous word of procrastination. That's one of my enemies. I have to work hard to fight, to win, to battle against putting things off. Another thing you can do is rate your satisfaction in the areas of your life. Are you happy with your spiritual life? Are you happy with your family life? Are you happy with your personal growth? Are you happy with where your Shackley business is today? If not, what do you need to do to take it to the next level? Don't settle for average. Create some specific means for stretching in the areas of your life, which you're not winning at. How many phone calls do you need to make? How many books do you need to read? How often do you reflect on your day? 
Do you have a time for meditation? Do you have a time for relaxing? Do you have a time for exercising? Do you have time for your family? And if we establish a balance between our potential and our present place, so that stretching in both creates the possibilities and challenges us. The tension is critical, but you don't want to be overwhelmed because when you get overwhelmed, you simply tend to give up. Make your stretching just like any other goal. Make it fall into the acronym of the SMART goal. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and with time limits. I want to reach this level by this date. I want to go on this vacation by this time. I want to read this book by this date. All of those things apply to our stretching and growing and remembering the law of the rubber band. The rubber band can stretch and can go and do so much more than it is when it's collapsed and barely fits around your wrist. Now, you remember I said it, when I do this teaching live, I give everybody a rubber band. And I ask them to put that rubber band around their wrist. And then I remind them that they can pull it and they can see it stretch. And it reminds you that you need to stretch every day if you're going to reach your goals and your potential. The law of the rubber band stretching to help us grow. Remember, why settle for mediocrity when success is an option? And interestingly, sometimes in our growth process, we have to focus on what are the things that we need to stop doing today so that the things that we want for tomorrow are available to us. And that takes us into the law of the trade-offs. Because the law of the trade-offs says this. You have to give up to go up, or you have to give up to grow up. You know, the hardest part about stealing second base is that you have to get your foot off of first base. Most of us like to stick to that comfort area, that thing that holds us close to where we're comfortable. But if we're going to go from where we are today to where we dream about being in the future, sometimes we have to get off of first base. So what are the steps to help us do that? What will it take for you to reach your potential? Gosh, we've said that a lot, haven't we? Isn't that what we're talking about? It's about being intentional in our growth so that we can reach our potential. It's about being intentional in our stretching so that we can reach our potential. It's about believing in ourselves so we can repeat, reach our potential. And sometimes we have to give up to go up. So what are you willing to give up so that you can reach that next level, so that you can reach your potential. Not being willing to give up something is a key reason why most people don't ever reach their potential. We're safe. We're comfortable. We don't want to get out of the comfort zone. And giving, getting out of the comfort zone oftentimes means that we're going to have to give up something to do that. 
So what will you have to give up? The truth about trade-offs. Trade-offs are available to us throughout our lives. Here's the thing that is interesting about trade-offs. Unsuccessful people make bad trade-offs. Average pay people make very few trade-offs. And successful people make good trade-offs, and they analyze and know what they need to give up to go up. Trade-offs are opportunities for growth. We may not always get what we want, but we always get what we choose. Will I go through this change or grow through this change? There are two questions to ask in evaluating trade-offs. What are the pluses and minuses of this trade-off? And will I go through this change or grow through this change? Will I go through the change or will I grow through the change? We may not always get what we want, but we always get what we choose. Trade-offs force us to make difficult personal changes. When you want something you have never had, you must do something that you have never done. Change is personal. To change your life, you need to change, question mark, what? What do you need to change? Change is possible. Everybody can change. Change is profitable. You will be rewarded when you change. Refusing to change means certain death to your potential. A loss is usually felt before any gain. So when you're giving up something, it might be painful at that moment. But when the reward comes, you will quickly forget about the loss. The biggest reason people don't change is because they don't have the desire to grow beyond where they are. It said, it is said that nature abhors a vacuum. The same is true about our own spirits, but the transition time between the change and the fruit of the change can be a powerful formation time toward our maturity. Don't focus on the loss, focus on the gain. Most trade-offs can be made at any time. Trade-offs for better health, trade-offs for more education, they all can be done along the way. Become a lifelong learner. Do the things that we teach and train and share about our businesses, better health and better nutrition to improve our habit, improve our health. Look at your daily rituals, your daily habits. What can you change that will help you be better than the next day? It is rarely too late to make a change. 
A trade-off, few trade-offs only come once in a lifetime. Don't miss the opportunity. Don't miss the possibility that exists when trade-offs come your way. The higher you climb, the tougher the trade-off. This is a good one. I can tell you, we were Dale and I are chuckling at this one earlier because as we've grown and as we've gotten on up the ladder in, in our Shackley business and the things that we have to give up so that we can go to the next level are not always fun and they are always more difficult. Many people stop growing because they have reached a height for which they are no longer willing to work to get higher. And it takes, I can tell you the work to go from, from key to senior key to master is It's exponentially more than it took to get from where we were to where we are today. The skills that you thought were important to you then are even more important and more exacerbated today than they were ever before. We have to grow. We have to increase our skills so that we can get to the next level. Consider your own potential. What will it feel like to trade off to get to your next level? There's no doubt that it will feel wonderful for us to reach the next level. And I'm sure it's the same for you to go to the next level in your business, in your personal growth life, in your family life, in your spiritual life. The, the rewards are amazing. And the feeling that you get from the accomplishment is always worth the trade-off. Trade-offs never leave us the same. That is so, so true. You know, a lot of times there's the, the fear, the fear that we deal with. And it stops us and holds us back. But when we say, yes, yes, I will. Yes, I can. And think about this. What if you stay right where you are? Consider if you were, if you are in, I'll get this out in a minute. Let me get some water. Consider if where you are is where you want to remain. That is a change to be different. Are you where you want to be? If not, you're going to have to change. Trade-offs never leave us the same. We're going to be different. Man, that donut looks good, but I know that apple is the best thing for me. But giving up that donut for that apple is worth making. Some trade-offs are just worth taking. And then some you have to be careful with. You've got to look at what that trade-off means to you. Don't overextend yourself. There are some trade-offs that will damage or harm or even ruin an entire life. So evaluate your trade-offs and only make those trade-offs that are worth making so that you can have the financial security for potential tomorrow. Immediate gratification, gratification for personal growth. When I grow, when I teach these lessons, when I work with people, I get immediate gratification because I know I'm growing and they're growing. The fast life for the good life 
I can tell you, I used to live a fast and furious life. And I oftentimes didn't know whether the sun was coming up or the sun was going down. But today, I live the good life. And making that trade-off, I can tell you, was well worth it. More family time. More time to do the things that I want to do. More potential, more opportunity. I don't have somebody's thumb over me. I have a choice. And the trade-off I made was to leave that corporate world to be the entrepreneur that I dream and want to be. I control my calendar, not someone else. Well, maybe Dale has a little bit to do with that, but by and large, I have control of my calendar. Oh, yeah. And then that other business partner we have, Elizabeth. But we do. We have more control, and Elizabeth has more control, and Dale has more control of their calendars, and we can do the things that we need to do. If we choose to take a day to the, go to the beach or we take a day to go to the mountains, we have that choice. I don't have to ask anybody, oh, boss, can I take the day off? I love where I am in my life because I am living the good life. And that would not have happened if not for my stretching, my trade-offs, giving up something so that I could have something better. Do what you do best and drop all the rest. That's one of the greatest parts of my trade-off is that I'm doing the things that not only am I good at, but the things that I enjoy doing and I, and I get that empowered feeling that I am free to help and grow other people to reach into other people's lives and help them go from where they are to where they dream about being to help people grow their businesses from where they are today to where they dream about being tomorrow and the next day and the next year in the next five years. Trade-offs worth making. Security for significance. Significance is not found in a safe place. Addition for multiplication. Lead leaders, not just followers. Be a conduit for blessings not a reservoir for assets. Be the river, not the river reservoir. Don't hold it in. Let it out. Share it with others. Multiply your gifts and your talents and expand your potential. As we think about the law of trade-offs. I recommend that you write your own personal list of trade-off principles. Use this as a guide to begin to begin your list. Number one, I am willing to give up financial security today for potential to t- tomorrow. I am willing to give up immediate gratification for personal growth. I am willing to give up the fast life for the good life. I'm willing to give up security for significance, and I am willing to give up addition for multiplication. As important as trade-offs is knowing what you are willing to trade off. List some of those things for which you will, that there will be no compromise. 
As you list the no compromise areas, also develop some safety measures that will ensure you never stray from your priorities. And what trade-offs, what trade do you need to make today? What is your next level and what will it cost you to get there? There are no better chapters in this book than the law of the rubber band and the law of trade-offs. They are the meat to me that takes us from where we are today to where we dream and want to be tomorrow, to understand our potential and to understand what it takes for us to get there and knowing that sometimes we have to give up to go up, to know that we have to stretch every day to get to the next level, that we don't sit in the comfort zone the rest of our lives. If you do nothing today to move you forward, then tomorrow will be the same day. So stretch and grow and become more. What is it that you're willing to trade off so that you can grow to the next level? Next week, hi there. Next week, we'll be sharing again two chapters. And the next chapters that we'll be talking about or the law of curiosity and the law of modeling. And they say this, that the law of curiosity, growth is stimulated by asking why. I think that's one of the best questions we could ever ask ourselves. Why do we want to be successful in Shackley? Why do we want to earn the additional monies? Why do we want the time freedoms? Why? Curiosity. Curiosity. And why not? Why not those things? What's holding us back? And then we have to ask ourselves, why not you? And why not now? Curiosity is that great chapter. And I'll probably say that it's my favorite chapter next week, but that's just the way I am because they're all my favorite chapters. And then the law of modeling. It's hard to improve when you have no one but yourself to follow. So who are your mentors? Who are your coaches? Who are you looking to, to model after? We'll share more about that next week. Well, I'm excited that you're here today, and I hope that the information has been valuable to you. You can find those challenge questions and those things to help you move forward in the handout there on the last page of the handouts. I hope that you've taken time to look at the book or read the book. Uh, I can't teach everything in the book in the short period of time that we have together. Um, and I hope you're using the journal. I hope you're following along as it, uh, it certainly has uh, a lot of good information. Dale shares with me, uh, what she's writing and what she's journaling in hers. And of course y'all have heard me say I journal daily and I use a different process and, uh, I pretty much journaled, uh, this whole book and chapters in this book for many, many uh, months now and have learned a tremendous amount of information uh, to help me as I grow forward in, uh, in, my, uh, in my journey. And yes, my journey continues. It will never end as I encourage you to be a lifelong learner. And when you are a lifelong learner, you will be able to give back more and share more with others. Any thoughts, any questions, anybody out there in the 
cyberspace land who would like to be uh, a panelist and come on and speak, you're welcome to do so. Um, uh, I see, t I see Tara. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Tara. I, um, I always enjoy uh, hearing your sweet comments and sharing your journey with us. Thank you for being here. All right. Well, again, I look forward to You're welcome, Ashley. Glad you're on the call. I look forward to our next week. Um, we um, we are rapidly coming to an end. And I will do two lessons next week and then two lessons the following week. And then I will do a single call to just wrap up the session and give a quick overview of everything that we've covered. I look forward to seeing you next week and I trust that you are stretching yourself and that you're looking at how you can make the necessary trade-offs so that you can go up and grow up. Have a great week and I look forward to seeing you next time.